Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We did it. We knocked out 2023 Bowman Draft Baseball Super Jumbo Case Break number two. We're doing all six boxes. All card ship, a lot of cards per pack, a lot of stuff, five autos a box. Let's get after it. Big thanks to this group here for making it happen here on 12-12-2023. This is Pick Your Team 2. Gary, you ended up with Last Spot Mojo with the White Sox before I pulled the remaining teams, and we gave them away in that blaster break. So if you have Blaster 1 next to your name, you won those teams in that break. Thanks, everybody, for, uh, for getting your team straight up or joining that blaster box. I appreciate you. All right, now, sort of an awkward sized case here, so... Uh, just open it here. You can see it on this camera. All right. One, two, three. The whole run right over there. All right, and I appreciate every, uh, once again everybody making this happen. Now we got we do have more in the store. If you want to get after it, but I think we don't have time for any full cases tonight. But we do have time for uh, that. There's a two box break. Load it up. Another a two box break of Super Jumbo from a fresh case, a different case than this. So if you want to do that, we do have time for that after after this break. All right, TP is excited. This is this. You must be Todd. Todd, what what teams do you have, or team or teams do you have? What are you what are you expecting? What are you looking for? Goes to everybody. Who's who's in the break? Let's do a little roll call. Who's in the break watching live? What are you hoping for? Mets and Tigers, nice. I'm definitely hoping for a lot of Max Clarks for Detroit. Gilo, Gilo will just be happy with anything. He won a spot through the blaster break. Got the Astros. A couple autos. Some low numbered cards, some color. Would be awesome. Yeah, that would be cool. We have not seen one of those yet. Of all the, a lot of breaks, uh, I think on Instagram, Teddy did a bunch of this Bowman draft. I did a bunch of this Bowman draft. So did Jason and Mike. Uh, I just feel like we've, none of us have seen a Tom Brady, just even just a regular, just a card, let alone an auto, but we haven't seen anything like that. So it'd be nice to see one, Gilo. I agree, just to say we did. All right, 
And there's Alex Ramirez for the Mets to 199. Todd. With the Mets, Wyatt Langford. All these will go to Tristan. And all of these Max Clark's paper and chrome. All card ship, but these are the sort of prospects that we're highlighting. On that list is also... Is also Paul Skeens, obviously, your number one overall pick. Number three overall pick, Max Clark. Wyatt Langford, Jacob Wilson, Matt Shaw, Colt Emerson. Some of the key players that we're highlighting. And if I happen to miss any of those, don't worry. Our, our sorting and shipping team also have the same list, and they'll, be, they'll, uh, they'll do their best to pull and top load those. And there's Cam Fisher, Gilo with the first auto. Won the team in the filler. And before the video started, he was just like, you know what? I feel like this guy always hits. There you go. Decent penmanship too. <laughs> right head. Got him. And there's Dylan Campbell for my Dodgers. 96 out of 250. That'll be for, for Mark. Mark L. And the Dodgers. There you go, Mark. through some of this paper and there's Isaiah Coupette 68 out of 499 for the rocks that's going to be for Darren and there's Maui Ahuna that will be for the Giants Mark B with that one 499 Are you having fun? I am. Good. Are you? A better time. You're having a better time. Yeah, it's always like, if it's slow, it's always better if someone else next to you. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this is true. The whole morning? That's, uh, that's kind of rough. Like, when is Joe going to... Or when is Jason going to... So when someone's going to be here, hang out with me. Yeah. Are you, how close are we to that 20 case? Or? 12 more. Yeah. That's, like, tantalizingly close. I know, I know. Like, I'm supposed to leave in 15 minutes. And then... Debating, Just grind it out. And... Uh, Ledbetter will go to the Rays. That's for Mark B. And then uh, that's Dylan Head. I think so. That's for the Padres. Those glass cards are pretty cool. Chris Lindsay with that one. I'm not bored. I'm just tired. I've been here for 12 hours. You know, I don't know, five hours of sleep. Oh, five hours of sleep. Yeah. I tried to go to bed early last night. And then it didn't happen. Didn't it's happen. hard. Like once your body is adjusted to like yeah. this weird schedule. It's like I'll get in bed at, at like eleven o'clock, and I won't go to bed till two. Right. Maybe like, you know, you you pop on a TV show, yeah. you watch or a like, documentary. I'll lay down. And I'll be like, all right, I'm actually gonna try and fall asleep. No TV, nothing. And then I'll be like, eh. and then I'll get up and then go do something. Right. There's Garrett Forrester. Garrett finding Forrester. That's going to be Chris Butler and the Pirates, the Buckos. From Roseville, California. You think there's anyone from the South Bay in this set this year? Uh, that's a good question. It'd be kind of cool to 
Here, I'll just start looking through every card. Yeah, start looking <laughs> looking at the back of every card, and look for, you know, Torrance, yeah. Vita, El Segundo, Redondo Beach. No, I don't think Stanford counts. Nah, uh, let's wait. That's too far from here. No, yeah, what happened? You didn't want the Brady jersey? It's an XL. I'm like, I like swimming it. Are we giving it away now? Yeah, Joe didn't want his. We're giving it away. If it was like, if it was like size Joe, then mine's a double X. I didn't ask for a double X. <laughs> <laughs> I gave Jason a Dodger jersey. Mookie Betts, actually. All right, Jacob Wilson for the A, Steve H, Matt Shaw. These will all go to EA and the Cubs. We will find some South Bay guys here. Alberto Rios is from Bellflower. Where does, uh, who does he play for? Oh, the Angels? I feel like, that's why it crawled. Um, Our guy, Jesus, Chewy works here, and he went to high school, I think he went to Downey. There's a, there's a ball player that's his year that is in the Rockies system, I think. There's Felden Celestin to 499. You also get that Colt Emerson paper too, Walter, Seattle. You saw some paper autos pulled today. That can't be too common, right? And there's Paul Skeens. Nice. Pirates. That'll be for Chris Butler. The Butler did it. It was the Butler. Your number one overall pick. Wish there was some color to it. But a lot of box go to start. That's right, Hitchburg, Gilo. Welcome to Hitchburg. Well, this guy's kind of close. This guy, that's right, Paul Skeens is from Fullerton. Nice. Ooh, Ed with a little teaser here. Langford and Skeens pair a lot in Super Jumbo. All right, let's keep an eye out. See some color coming up, autograph-wise. And it's a Ralphie Velasquez. Nice. Aqua Lava autograph for Brian and the Guardians. Cleveland, this is for you. 115 out of 199. Nice, Alberto Rios went to Bosco Bell for a play for Stanford afterwards. Nice. And he's in. Is he in this set? Got some glass coming up. 
And it's Ty Pete Glass and Michael Carrico. Four out of ten. Nice low number for EA and the Cubs. It's in the game. Nice to see those low numbers right there. Those look pretty cool. So I'll leave these right here. We'll do a little recap later. All right, one box down. And here's another one. He is. All right, I'll keep an eye out for, for local guy, Alberto Rios. Uh, and Tommy Troy. And we also are the two Stanford guys. Tommy Troy Diamondbacks, maybe? D backs, right. And someone someone Diego is looking for. Ah, he's on our hour honorable mention list, but top six or seven for Ed. Yeah, that's that's another fun part of this of this product is like you know people have differing opinions on hey who's you know outside of like the you know the top handful of picks right. All right. Onwards, another box. And another search for monsters. All these Wyatt Langfords going to Tristan in Texas. Here's a Missouri guy, Gilo. You should look him up. We've got time. We've got time in this break, Gilo, for you to look up your Missouri guy really quick and see where he is. There's Teddy McGraw. I almost said Tim McGraw. That's not Tim McGraw. That's Teddy McGraw. Seattle. That's going to be for Walter. 10 out of And there's a Max Anderson, not a Max Clark, but a Max Anderson. 19 out of 99 for Detroit. That's going to be for Todd. We're looking for more color from this guy, Max Clark. Ooh, I don't want to see any Mon Stars in this, Rex. That's not what I want to see. It's like, you guys are in the wrong set, guys. Not supposed to be here. And we got gold paper, 26 out of 50. Rainer Arias for the Giants, Mark B.
And we got a Wyatt Langford base autograph for Tristan. There you go, your fourth overall pick. Nice. Ah, so Gilo's guy from Missouri is Zantello on the Red Sox, a tier two prospect. Yeah, Ed, you were right. Ed was like, if you see a Skeens auto, a Langford auto isn't too far behind. I'm sure the other way around works too. If you see a Langford auto, Skeens auto isn't too far behind. So in Super Jumbos, that's, a, that's good, to, good to know. Yeah, as you watch more of these breaks, ladies and gentlemen, you'll start to see some patterns start to emerge. Personal criteria for picking a player to chase, well, like as it pertains to Bowman Draft? Well, unless it's like number one guys like this, you probably got to think hitters. You want hitters, you want fairly large market teams, probably want corner infielders, to be honest with you, like first or third base. Maybe even, you know, some of these shortstop guys can be pretty popular too. These guys that hit for power play for big market teams. Yeah, at least early on, that's what you're, that's what you're, those are the sort of criteria that I personally look for. Now, as time goes on, as they start playing in the minors more, then you start seeing then you start looking for, I mean, but that's the criteria, like if you're just day one of Bowman draft, you know, but as time goes on, you kind of want to see how, how, you know, obviously how are they doing in the minors? Are they raking in the minors? Here's Grayson Hit, purple chrome autograph for Diego, Diego Lopez and the Snakes. 243 out of 250. But yeah, again, obviously as time goes on, you want them to do well in the minors, kind of move up the ranks year to year. And hopefully have like a personality, <laughs> you know what I mean? Can't believe Upper Deck never capitalizes any Space Jam relic cards. Do they? Probably a licensing thing. Probably didn't have the license to to create trading cards for the motion picture. And for the Mets, yellow parallel fifty one seventy five Austin Trosser. That's going to go to Todd and the Metropolitans. Yeah, what do you like, Gio? Consistency and a good environment. Yeah. I did see that. I did see Ronnie Mauricio tearing his ACL. Was he supposed to get... Was he going to be a starter this year? Was he a starter last year? Was he a starter? He was a shortstop and Francisco Lindor was in the way. And there is a Mac Horvath. Speckle Auto for Joe Howard and the O's. There you go, Joe. 25 out of 71.
And a white lane for paper. Some glass. Jacob Wilson glass, nice. These can be autographed too. We haven't seen one yet, but they, the, the potential is there. A, Steve Herrick. And we got a Zach Levinson, 22 out of 125. Aqua wave. For the Cardinals, Michael, with that one. Yas, Yasser Mercedes, twenty two out of one out of four ninety nine. Saw Jake Wilson struck out only five times in a season once. Does it say that here? Wow, struck out only thirty one times in six hundred and twenty career at bats. Jeez. That's like that's like a throwback to like I don't know, that's a throwback to like the players in like the seventies and eighties. And there's another Oriole, Jackson Bowmeister. Jackson Bowmeister. The Bowmeister, the Boaster, the Bowmanator. It's going to show in the Orioles. Ah, no power. I don't know, with that kind of, I don't know, that kind of contact though, could, could power emerge? There's Alberto Rios, we were just talking about him. There he is from Bellflower, that's near here. Nice, third round pick by the Angels. Hopefully he does well. And there's Zach Thornton. 134 out of 250 for Todd and the Mets. All right, another box down. And here comes another box. Ed, what what are you looking for when you're when you're prospecting? Gila was asking this question a little bit earlier. I think it's worth exploring. I think it's generally hitters, right? I feel like that's what collectors seem to like: hitters, power hitters, corner corner infielders, especially third baseman, maybe. Maybe with the, with the way they've changed the the rules to allow, yeah, hit power combo with some flash, yeah. I wonder if with the with the uh, new rules, do you think speed becomes sexy again? Maybe we'll see some 100 steel guys, and that's gonna that's gonna get people excited. But yeah, yeah, I guess if you could see a uh... right, it would have to be like electric speed. If speed is to be sexy again, we're we're talking like. Stealing home kind of thing, which I think Ellie Dela Cruz has done. Stealing home type, 
type electric speed. Like we're talking like, we're talking like Willie Mays Hayes. I've even heard some Reds fans suggest that maybe, maybe you sell high on Ellie De La Cruz and the Reds organization should should try to trade him for a giant haul. Who do I think has the most ridiculous career stats in baseball? That's easy. Shohei Otani. Someone who could hit and pitch at a top tier level. If it wasn't for the fear of injury, he could probably steal a bunch of bases too. I think in his early years, they would they would measure Otani and Trout going down uh, going down the first baseline. Talk about how how fast Otani actually is, faster than Trout, and Trout's pretty quick for his size. There's Luis Guanipa, 122 out of 499. James Wood is faster than LA, sell the team saying. But does he have that Ali De La Cruz exit velo? Retired players? Babe Ruth. He's got pretty ridiculous stats. See how many homers he's hit? And his pitching in the early years wasn't too bad either. Tommy Hawk, Guardians, 111 out of 499. That's for Brian. Cleveland, this is for you. I wonder who struck out Jacob Wilson. Is that the cha the pitcher chase? Yeah, maybe. There he is. There's Jacob Wilson. Doesn't strike out a lot. Look it up, Gilo. I'm, I'll bet you can go through some game logs of Jacob Wilson and see uh, who struck him out. I feel like a lot of times that could just be like, be like just a handful of pitchers, just a few pitchers who has like his number for whatever reason. I'll bet it's not a bunch of different pitchers striking him out. Or maybe it is, I don't know. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's just a handful of pitchers striking him out multiple times. Cruise speed and power is a good prospect. Need to see another like him, out there like him. There's Razan Zen Zenatello. This is a Gilo's guy. He went to Missouri. That will be for Boston. That's going to be for Kirk. And Drew Hackenberg, 22 out of 75, yellow lunar. Right, you can kind of see the lunar landscape parallel, which I think is kind of cool. That is uh, for the Bravos. That'll be for Patrick and the Braves. So the team thinks that uh, I think Ricky Henderson tagging home more than any player ever. Or that the current player uh, with the most on base can steal 100 years from here, still not catch him. That is kind of wild. You think that's still an unbreakable record, all-time steals? Because Ricky did play for a long time, too. So someone, a player in his rookie year, needs to just, pun intended, hit the ground running. There's Cole Young to 499 for Seattle, for Walter. And there's Dylan Campbell. Dodgers, Mark, Mark L. Nobody will even come close. 
think he might be right. I think that's that's one of the one of the unbreakables. I mean, maybe maybe unbreakable in our lifetime. Maybe long after we shed this mortal coil, then maybe that'll happen. Yeah, but I feel like guys like Ruiz, while they steal a lot of base, I suppose, I feel like they don't get on base enough. I mean, Ricky Anderson can, could proper hit too. We got Mike Bo Eve. Both? 36 out of one. Bo E? Evie. Eva. From a. Uh, that Disney movie, Wally. Wally. Directive. Should be looking for three more autographs out of this box. Wyatt Langford, and we got Quinn McDaniel. That is for Mark B and the Giants. Yeah, I, I'm with you, Rex. I, I, I think that those are that's another set of records that won't be broken. Nolan Ryan's no hitters. Not too many, not too many manager managers in modern baseball that that allow players to go deep enough for no hitters. And yeah, consecutive games, forget it. Speckled non-auto is not numbered. Yeah, indeed, Malcolm. Vince Coleman, Tim Raines could run as well in the 80s, but Henderson, Ricky was definitely... Yeah, I think, I think they, anything in the pitching category, right? Are we going to ever see... Yeah, are we ever going to see 500... Core? We're barely going to see... 200 wins for a lot of these pitchers coming up and relatively speaking that's probably by the end of their careers 150 wins are going to be maybe hall worthy for for a future generation of pitchers you know and if you trickle that down just because the how starting pitchers are deployed these days i think if you just go down the rankings of those records you know, like com number of complete games in a season. There's Johnny Formello, 53 out of 199. And I feel like even in the 80s or 90s, there were still a lot of pitchers. Hey, we were just talking about him. Alberto Rios for the Halos. Jeremy with the Angels. Won that team in the filler. A local guy. Nice. But yeah, I feel like even in the 80s, maybe even 90s, there's still a number of pitchers who would get, you know, of their 28 to 32 starts, there would still be a number of guys getting double-digit complete games.
feel like there's a lot of max effort pitching too, right? A lot of pitchers are going max effort more often, so I feel like an injury at some point definitely derails some players. And there's Luke Kashal. I'm going to go with that. Luke Kashal going to Mark B and the Twins. 35 out of 250. One, two, three, four, five. Those are, those are five autographs. Let's see if we can find some parallels. What, like a regular complete game kind of guy, Malcolm? Maybe. I mean, I suppose there could be a, could be a time where, or a point in time where Pitchers will be max effort, but but because of that, they might be extremely efficient. Maybe that maybe that needle can be threaded. Power pitching. There's Colson Montgomery to 150 for the White Sox. That's for Gary and the very noble Meyer for the Marlins. That's for Chris Butler. I wonder if you could thread that needle. Thread the needle where, where you can kind of do what Greg Maddox used to do, like sub-100 pitch complete games. And then still rack up strikeout numbers. Maybe, maybe when there's a generation of pitcher that can do that. We might see, might see the complete game come back. When androids get into the league, all records will be destroyed, says Rex. I don't know, unless we create a separate league for androids. Would that be racist against androids? There may be a time a thousand years from now where that might be a that might, might be a or a hundred years from now. With technology going exponentially, that might be a thing. Maybe that is what will uh, what will uh, what will cure. The, 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 the virus of racism in society. We can all be racist against another group, androids. If, we can, if all humans could hate androids together, right, this is like the humanity will come together if an alien invasion happens and then for the greater good. There has to be a transitional point where that happens, right? At what point, how many, that's gonna be in a future collective bargaining agreement. How much of your body can be mechanical parts? This will be in the 3010 collective bargaining agreement. <laughs> All baseball players must be at least, you know, 60% flesh and blood to be eligible to play Major League Baseball. I mean, you can't have, you can't have, you know, 
Chase uh, Jaworski the fifth having three quarters of his limbs be robotic. Is that an unfair competitive advantage? You know, if he's like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna swap out my right arm with a stronger bionic right arm. You know, instead of throwing, instead of my infield throwing speed from shortstop being, you know, 95 miles per hour, I'm slinging that at 150 miles per hour. At that point, players like Matt Shaw, the eighth, will be like, well, you know, I'll just get bionic legs to outrun that person's arm, you know, and get bionic eyes to be able to track pitches being thrown at 150 miles per hour. Where does it stop, ladies and gentlemen? Scared Forrester to 199. But those are 30-10 problems. We'll let our great-great-grandchildren worry about that. There's Jackson Wiggins. In 2024, we can worry about pace of play in games, the size of bases, sticky stuff on baseballs. Uh, Jackson Wiggins, Cubs Auto, going to EA. If a 100% Android player signs a card, would that be a real auto or a facsimile? That would be a real auto, Rex. A facsimile would be if they, if they copy that auto and then reprinted it. Your question should be, your question should be, would it be a real auto or would it be like using an, uh, an auto pen? Wait, which is frowned upon in the hobby. And there's Johnny Formello and Paul Skeen, some color, 188 out of 250. That's for Pittsburgh. That's going to be for Chris Butler. Got the Pirates straight up. Uh, I think I'm gonna write some uh, some future sports sci-fi. Explore some of these issue issues, much like Isaac Asimov explored those issues and such stories as iRobot. There's Luke Schilder. Use the false Luke. It's going to go to Mark B and the Giants. Oh, with the black shield down, how am I supposed to fight? like three different Wyatts. There's like Wyatt Langford, Wyatt Hudful, and there was like a Wyatt Kroll for the, there's, there's like three different Wyatts in this set.
Remember how there was a run in the 90s of a lot of uh, Wyatt Earp movies? I think there was a movie called Wyatt Earp. And there was like Tombstone. And then there was like a third movie, I think. Maybe another Tombstone movie, but I think Val Kilmer was... No, no Val Kilmer was in Tombstone. Where Kevin Costner was Wyatt Earp? Tombstone was the better of the of that era of westerns, right? Why Wyatt? You're an oak. There's Rhett Louder. Louder. For Adam Kupperman, Cincinnati Reds. A little bit louder now, a little bit louder now, a little bit louder now, a little bit louder now. Has anyone been to a wedding where the wedding DJ has not played Shout? Zach Thornton, 196 out of 199. You got to think that 95% or more of weddings in the United States there's the other wire right there that has a reception with live music or any kind of music DJ, band, otherwise they're playing shout 86 out of 99, Jackson Bowmaster. The Bowmaster. The Boaster. The Bonator. They're playing it. They're playing Shout. Nice. Christian Campbell. Gold Wave autograph. That looks sharp. That's going to go to Boston. That is for Kirk. Thirteen out of fifty on that one. Nice. All these Max Clark's going to Todd and the uh, Detroit Tigers. Schemes. Max Clark. Ooh, haven't I seen on this? I feel like there's not a lot of... I guess, I guess we haven't seen a lot of Colt Emersons. I have, we have seen them, but... Just, maybe not as much as some of these other guys. Shout. Gets old people, young people on the dance floor. There's a... Uh, gets people... Uh, there's... It's a song that tells you what to do. People like that. You know, they can, they can get louder. They can get softer. They're telling everybody to shout. The Isley, it's the Isley Brothers version is usually the one that they're playing. Telling everybody to shout. This is like the Everybody Clap Your Hand song. That's becoming more popular at weddings. Everybody clap your hands. Clap, 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 clap your hands. It's not just at baseball stadiums. Brick House, play that funky music. That is at over 90% of weddings in the United States, Chris Butler. That's absolutely true.
Ooh, Max Anderson, class of 2023 autograph. This is the first one of these I've seen, class of 2023 autos. Not Max Clark, but Max Anderson will have to do, Todd. And it's 32 out of 50. Journey. They're always, everyone, I would say Journey is a lot. Just a small town girl living in a lonely world. It's usually at the end. She took a midnight train going anywhere. Just a city boy, born and raised in South Detroit. I know, that's unfair, Todd. Having, having two Maxes on the same team? Come on. It's Cold Emerson and Jace uh, Bufferin. 27 out of 75, yellow lunar for Toronto. That's for Omar. And there's Colt Emerson Glass. They call me Mr. Glass. That's going to be for Seattle. Walter. All right. We're in the final third of our break. Two boxes to go. Two of the six. Final two. About another half hour to go. I think my timing was right. I said about an hour and a half for this. We're at the hour mark right now. 58 minutes. Uh, oh, Rex, well, you, you're talking about the Tears for Fears song. I'm talking about Shout by the Isley Brothers. A popular wedding reception song. Talking about shout from Tears for Fears. The song that I would argue you're not hearing too often at weddings, wedding receptions. I mean, unless it's like, I don't know, the part where it's like everyone's gone home and it's, it's not too many people left. I do not mean twist. I mean, uh, what the, 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 you know, shout. The song where, where they, they say, you know, you make me want to shout. You know, you make me want to shout. Throw your hands up, shout. Every wedding. Now, twist and shout. I feel like that should be at more weddings. I do not hear that often enough. Right, yeah. Like shout from Animal House. Not like twist and shout from Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Or the popular cover by the Beatles. Last song, Please Please Me. All right, the penultimate box. 
Five more autos. Good luck. We'll do a little auto uh, recap at the end so you can see what you got. If anything, hopefully we've got things to send you. Twist and shout. Twist and shout. Johnny was shouting earlier. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on now, baby, now. Come on, baby, now you are better now. You know you twist so so good. Twist 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 so good. And let me know that you're mine. Blake Mitchell. Blake Mitchell, Aqua Lava for the Royals. That's their big prospect, Kirk Arnold. 41 out of 199, their eighth overall pick. Ooh, nice, Johnny. Grats on that. That didn't make me shout. Even twist and shop. Sacramento Kings are getting smoked here. Clippers are up 110 to 79. On and we got a Matt Shaw. Glass. Nice. Rex is asking, what's the best wedding related movie? You'd say Wedding Singer and Father of the Bride. No, no Brady's, Johnny, not yet. It's Kevin Parada, the 99, though, for Todd and the Mets. Best wedding movie. I don't know if I watch a lot of <laughs> wedding movies. Wedding Crashers, there you go, that's a good one. That's better than Wedding Singer or Father of the Bride. Some may argue that my best friend's wedding is up there. Aren't, aren't some of the Mamma Mia sequels about weddings? I've never seen them. But the, uh, the trailers lead me to believe that they, they are wedding related. Here's Jay Zabafarin again for Toronto. Godfather Part 1 has a great wedding scene. And then the, uh, the Sound of Music has a wedding scene that I could do without. Don't need it. Got Emmanuel Bonilla, 89 out of 125. Oh, scouted since he was 14. Oh, 
Oh, Re- Rex knows. Are, are there quotable lines from The Wedding Singer? I've, I've maybe seen that twice in my life. Kill Bill. That's right. That there's a good wedding sequence there. It's a pretty good, uh, pretty good movie. Tarantino has opened up some, uh, has restored and opened, reopened some old, like, single screen movie theaters in, in Los Angeles, in the Hollywood area. I think he played screen Pulp Fiction at one of them, which I heard was really cool. I wouldn't mind seeing a Kill Bill 1 and 2 double feature. A little, a little intermission in between. Grace and Hit. 50, uh, 64 out of 150. Blue Wave, that is for Diego. Nice. These are, uh, what are they called again? Mood rings. This is a short print. And that is a nice mood ring. That's Matt Shaw. Your uh, 13th overall pick for the Cubs. EA and the Cubs. Nice. Wait, only once in a blue moon do Scott's fine players driven as detail or in a shot. The former Maryland star eats two spoons of sugar or two spoons of honey 12 minutes before every game to get his energy level perfect. He's meticulous about his sleep and his pregame routines. All trades I should ease pro's transition. Honey? Huh. If he makes it to the bigs, people should... Should throw honey at him? No, don't throw things at him. There's Hunter Haas, 91 out of 250. Maybe maybe have him sign bottles of honey. Or maybe send bottles of honey to him. If I saw him in spring training, and if I was a Cubs fan and a Matt Shaw fan, I would bring him a bottle of honey. I don't know if that was his choice. Maybe he mentioned that in an interview and someone's like, we're going to put that on the back of a baseball card. I don't think it's on the back of this card, though. Any honey honey talk here? No, no honey talk back here, but on that mood ring card, you've learned something new. Oh, absolutely, Johnny. Very happy. It's going to be harder to get to Dodger games these days, but very happy about Otani on the team. Now, if the Dodgers can address the real problem with the team, which is starting pitching, that would be, that would be excellent. If we can add, can add two starters to start ahead of the youngsters and a, and a Walker Bueller coming off Tommy John, I, I would love that. Here's a 10 out of 10, Johnny Farmello. Nice, that's paper, 10 out of 10. Nice, late first round pick by the Mariners, that's gonna go to Walter. And we got Kevin Sim. That is for Diego and the Diamondbacks, the Snakes, the D-backs. From Korea. Yeah, 
and a Cold Emerson. Yeah, I would love to see, I mean, the way Otani said he'd do his contract was for situations like this, Chris, where, where the Dodgers could still afford to spend money and be competitive. I mean, if we got... Yamamoto at the front of that. Uh, and here's Anatello, 90 out of 250. If we can have him at the front of the rotation, and then maybe trade for another guy like a like a Dylan Cease or a Glasnow type, then you back that up with a recovering Walker Bueller. You don't want to put too many innings on Walker's arm, so coming back from Tommy John. Plus Bobby Miller. Towards the back of the rotation, he doesn't have to worry about too much to learn his craft. And then your fifth, fifth or sixth starter could be some combination of, you know, Gavin Stone or Tony Gonsolin or, you know, a mixture of that. And then you've got, you know, then you've got uh, Otani in 2025. And there's Luke uh, Schilger. Use the false Luke. It's from Mark B. Yamamoto, what did they say, Tuesday? I think he met with some teams yesterday. He means he's meeting with teams throughout the week, apparently. And here is uh, Camden Minachi, 109 out of 125. That's for the Angels. That'll be for Jeremy. So I suppose we'll see the Yamamoto domino fall this week, ideally. And after that, I think you probably see, probably see Bellinger go off the board somewhere. Maybe you start seeing trades happen more often. There's like another another Japanese pitcher that's been posted that I'm sure those who are out on the Yamamoto sweepstakes might go for him. The next thing you know, a couple months, pitchers and catchers are reporting. Jason Jaspi already talking about I think, you're, I think Jason was smart. I think the day, the morning of, Saturday morning or something like that, he just had a sense that Otani was going to announce with the Dodgers. He, he bought spring training tickets to a game in early March or something like that. I bet there'll be a lot of people in Los Angeles who are going to go to spring training this year. It's going to be a zoo.
Also, who has numbers? Uh, what do you think Otani's number is going to be? Or did Joe Kelly... Oh, I guess it's already happened. I thought Miguel Vargas had 17. I guess Joe Kelly had 17, but... But apparently he's... Gonna give that to Otani. I wonder what kind of deal transpires there. You think Joe Kelly's just like, thank you for choosing the Dodgers? He's not gonna try to ask Otani for like a million dollars, one point seven million dollars for seventeen. Last box, ladies and gentlemen. I'd love to see Otani joke about how like, you know, like joke about like how he can't afford team dinners because he deferred most of his money. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I can't do the team dinner. Remember, I deferred most of my money. Sorry, Joe Kelly, I can't pay for that number. Remember, I deferred all that money. It's Colin Hawk. Mets, it's for Todd. There's Dylan Questad, 007 out of 125. Do the Angels retire Otani's number? <laughs> That's actually kind of a good question. Um, you mean like after after all is said and done with Otani's career? I wouldn't be surprised if they did. You know, after he's in the Hall of Fame. I'm sure the Angels would love to keep claiming Otani and use his name and likeness for, for marketing purposes. All right, another paper, Paul Skeens going to, uh, to Chris Butler, that Dylan Questad, that... I, it's sort of a... Is this Aqua? Looks a little different. Looks like a forest green from here, but it might be awkward. A 125 way for the Twins. That's going to be for Mark B. One auto, four more to go, and we're done with this break. Thanks for thanks everybody for hanging with me, spending time with me, goofing around, getting weird. Helps the break feel like it's going a lot a lot more quickly. So I appreciate that. Thanks everybody. Yeah, five or six seasons, something like that, right? Yeah, he, he, if he number does get retired, yeah. Probably be the only player in history to have his player number retired with only five or six seasons without winning, without going to the playoffs or winning a World Series title. I mean, if I was the owner, I wouldn't want to put up the number. But Angels might, and Artie Moreno might. It's Calvin Harris. Do 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 bounce. Do 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 bounce. Do 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 do. Eighty-five out of one fifty. Blue Wave autograph for the White Sox. Gary, last ball mojo. 70% of the time, last ball mojo hits 100% of the time. According to Jaspi math around here. No. Otani has not had one playoff game. Trout has had one playoff series. And I think the Angels, I think that was sort of early-ish in his career. And I think it was just, I think they got swept. I think it was 0-3, no wins. Something like that.
Which is kind of crazy. If after the first year of Otani's career, if I if I said if I polled people and said, you know, will Otani and Mike Trout reach the playoffs over the course of Otani's career, everyone would have said yes. I think. I guess it was a little touch and go when he when when he would suffer those injuries early in his career, but once he kind of rebuilt his body to handle the rigors of Major League Baseball season, it seemed like up until this Tommy John surgery, it seemed unstoppable. And he still might be unstoppable next. He might he might just focus on hitting and be like, I'll just hit sixty this year. Here's Jacob Cravey to one twenty five for the Orioles. That's going to be for Joe. Got Jace Young, Josh's brother to 199. Tigers, that'll be for Todd. Ooh, and we got a Jack Mahoney red. That's out of five. One out of five Jack Mahoney red chrome autograph. That's a train whistle for Darren McKenzie, D-Mac. Out of fives and under, get the train whistle. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Nice. Who are the what should have been teams? Oh, there's so many of those. Trout with Otani, Cubs after 2016. The Dodgers in 2017, Dodgers in 2018, the Dodgers two years ago. Maybe not the Dodgers last year. And that starting pitching was, I knew that that was going to end in tears at some point. Got Christopher Torin. I mean, there's there's so many of those teams. I mean, you can just look down the list of in baseball history, especially in the last 20, 30 years, how many times the best, especially as the playoffs have expanded, how many times the team with the best record has gone on to win the World Series. So there's a lot of shoulda, coulda, woulda teams. You can look at the Mariners, that team that won 120 games or whatever. There's Nathan Detmer to 499. And we got a gold Ethan O'Donnell autograph. We're on to Cincinnati. Adam Copperman. Twenty-seven out of fifty. Gold pops nicely there. A lot of nice color in this box. Yeah, we got another glass here. That's nice. 
That is uh, Enrique Bradfield Jr. Nice. Orioles, Joe. It's Colton Ledbetter to 99. Yeah, maybe in the White Sox the last, last few seasons, right? On paper, with some of the names that are that are there, I think a lot of people thought that the White Sox would have done a little bit better with what they had. And there's uh, Luke Kayshaw for the Twins. I think this is our fifth auto. Mark B with that one. Wow. One top load of despair right here. Let's see if we could be for a nice low numbered car, that'd be nice. And we do have some color here. It's Cole Young, 177 out of 250. Yeah, that's what it was, 116 games. Yeah, apologies to the, I know it's West Coast, apologies to the Seattle fans who are probably listening right now. But All right, nice break, everybody. That was Super Jumbo. Pick your team two. We got... Tons of color, tons of parallel right here that our shipping team will sleeve and top, or they're already sleeved, that will, they'll, they'll top load before these get shipped out. Here's an autograph recap. That out of five. We got the mood ring. Matt Shaw was really cool for EA. Blake Mitchell, some nice color. That's out of 10 paper. Class of 2023, Max Anderson. Paul Skeen's Purple Chrome. Got some Speckle, some Purple, some Wyatt Langford is nice. That's out of 10 Chrome. Paul Skeen's base autograph along with his future teammate Garrett Forrester. Cam Fisher for the Astros started things off for us. That's it, boys and girls. Thanks for watching. Thanks for breaking with us. I'm Joe. I'll see you next time for the next Bowman Draft Break. Bye-bye.